In lesson 7 on circle geometry, we are going to have a look at theorem 7. Theorem 7 says a tangent, and in our case that is ABC, is perpendicular, forming 90 degrees, to the radius of the circle drawn to the point of contact, which is point B. Let's have a look at an illustration of how this happens. Here we have a circle with a line cutting through at A and B. At point A, we've also drawn a radius, making an angle of 60 with this line AB. If I now move A closer and closer to B, that angle becomes bigger and bigger. And as A and B become the same point, and then forming a tangent, that angle is exactly 90 degrees. My reason for this theorem is tangent perpendicular to radius. Let's now have a look at how we're going to use this theorem. Example 1. In this sketch, ABT is a tangent to the circle at point B, and they are asking us to calculate the size of X. Our new theorem says that the angle at B will be 90 degrees because it is perpendicular to the radius, and we can then use that along with interior angles of a triangle to calculate X. So I'm going to start off by saying angle OBT is 90 degrees and my reason for that, tangent perpendicular to radius. And now I can calculate X by saying angle X is 180 minus the other two angles in that triangle, which is the 35 degrees and the 90 that we've just proven. My reason for that, interior angles of a triangle. And that means that x will be 55 degrees. Example 2. In the sketch, ABT is a tangent to the circle at B. And they ask us to calculate the size of x and y. So once again, I'm going to start off with our new theorem. And the theorem says that the tangent will be perpendicular to the radius, which is OB. So angle OBT will be 90 degrees. And my reason again, tangent perpendicular to radius. But now we know angle OBT consists of X and the 60 degrees, and that should add up to 90. So angle X will be 90 minus the 60. So angle X is 30 degrees. For angle Y, we now need to use some of our previous knowledge. So angle Y is subtended by arc BC and is an angle on the circumference. And from that arc BC, we can also form the angle at the center, which is angle O1. So we know that angle O1 is twice the size of angle Y. If we now focus on angle O1, angle O1 is in the isosceles triangle. OBC, and it's an isosceles triangle because we have two radii. Therefore, we can also say that angle C1 is 30 degrees and then go and calculate angle O1. So let's now write this down in a logic way. I'm going to start by saying that OB is the same length as OC because they are radii, and that means that angle OBC is equal to angle C1, and that means they are both 30 degrees. My reason for that, angles opposite equal sign. From here, I can now go and calculate angle O1, which will be 180 degrees minus the other two angles in that triangle, and they are both 30 degrees. My reason for this, interior angles of a triangle, and that means that angle O1 is 120 degrees. Now that I know angle O1 is 120 degrees, I can move on to angle D, which is Y. Y will be half of angle O1, and my reason for this, angle at the center, twice the angle on the circumference. And that means that Y is half of 120, which means that Y will be 60 degrees.